Right anyway, so now I've loaded up the airbrush and this has got Quicksilver Chrome in it. Now I've seen this used with a 0.35 ACS Eclipse so you can use it with an airbrush needle size down to that. We're not wanting to put on lots here. This is a build up coat, right? So we're basically just going to fold this on. Got a little bit of a different smell to it other than the other wear colours. Still not um, bothering me. First coat, you can't even see it. On the side cast, you can. Okay, wow. I get an indication already of how this is going to look, and it's just going to be wow. Making sure we get in there everything. All the nooks and crannies. Now, this is one of those products that, depending on how many coats you put on, how glossy it ends up. And what that means is reflectiveness. So if you want to make it like a black chrome, because we're going to put black over the top of this, don't put as many coats of the Quicksilver chrome down. If you want to make it a true closer to a chrome effect, well then make sure that you put a few more coats down so you get it to the opaque stage. Make sure we're drying it in between. We don't want this to puddle up on us at all. So just dry it as you go. It won't take long, I can tell you, after seeing what I can see in here, and the camera will not pick up on this. Um, not at this stage. But yes, it's got good coverage and it's got good reflectability straight off the bat. So I'll go ahead and I'll put a couple more coats on this and we'll get this closer and then we'll come back and we'll show you doing the last coat. So okay, before I put the last coat on, as you can see, this is a one-tenth scale model car. So this gives you an idea of what the coverage, I don't know whether or not you can see that. But that's a sample bottle I was supplied, that's the 60 mil bottle. I don't think I went through any more than 10 mil. In fact, probably even less than 10 mil. And we've covered this whole whole unit and that's from top to bottom right now the key is don't put it on really heavy this goes on super smooth super fine it's unbelievable I've never seen anything like this um, but what you can do is if you put it on really wet as I've done um, I've done one area wet to see what happens you can get it to pull which means it'll puddle on you um, so it'll be interesting I don't think after it was dried that it had any adverse effects but to get a nice even coverage is what you want. So we'll just put the last coat on here. This is a 0.5mm. This is atomizing it really well at about 40 psi. And this is just going to cover it. One last coat. And like I said, we haven't even gone through, I don't believe we've even gone through 10mm. As you can see, we're not up close. We're feathering the trigger, we're not plastering it on. And it's, as you put it on, the more coats you put on, you actually see the film get shinier and shinier as it dries. It's really, really nice. This is a great product. Now, the other thing I have noticed is this is a display piece, so I didn't stand in this particular shell because it's not actually going to get used. But what I said about sanding the shell is very relevant to uh, the paint systems to make them stick better. But what I have noticed is with the chrome, if you sand an area, it's the scratches show. So if you're going to use chrome, don't sand those areas. If you're going to use paint, by all means, sand the whole shell. But anywhere you want chrome, leave it unsanded, but make sure you give it a good wipe with isopropyl alcohol. And as you can see, that's on the inside. There's no gloss black on this yet. That is just the chrome. That is sensational. So there you go. We'll, we'll pull it apart, put some decals on it, and we'll show you it done.